This is a Nexus special, episode 17, Your Beloved, on Monday, April 1st, 2013. And now look at me. I'm a host. This episode of the Nexus special is hosted by Matthew Petchel and co-host Ryan Rampersad. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How about you? I'm doing well. That's good. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm the host today, right? Yes, you are the host I today. am the host and you are the co-host. Yes, even though I'm sitting here in the editing chair. But, you see, when I took the position of host, I changed the, the lineup of the rules and I made the co-host the one who actually does all the work. Wow, that sounds like... Remember, the host does all the work. You know, that, that's, because, that yeah. sounds like normal, right? No, 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 no. This is not going to be the normal machine. This is just for today because I'm the host. Okay, right, right. Okay. Temporary promotion. Right, right. Okay. And maximum direct. Yeah, I mean, nobody ever touches the board anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, I thought you had to, like, um, you know, set it back to zero, like, tune it every day because it haunts itself. It hasn't done that in the past couple of days. Nice. nice. <laughs> we got a record going. Yeah, I know. I'm petting the screw. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Do you know what happened a couple of days ago? No. You removed Steam from that computer. I did. No sound issues. No. Yeah. That's amazing. Steam is spyware. Turns out. Turns out. Yeah. And um, breaking news: I hear that um, the Chinese version of Skype is actually yes spyware. It is. I mean, like it's riddled with it. It, it even the word itself is riddled with spyware. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a secret only the Russians know right now. Well, that's that's okay. They're they they they're closest. Turns out. Mm-hmm. So you you probably I don't know. I, have you checked the website lately? Have you? Did you notice the like three new episodes of the universe? Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, you were complaining about them for weeks as you were just editing them on and off. Uh, so you know, it's a thing. You know, like you know, Sam. You've heard of him once or twice. You've met him a couple of times. I have. Yeah. Um. Well. His shows, so the past three shows came out all this morning. Uh, I, I finally got them up. Now, it's one show per week, but it took literally three days to edit each one because each show was about nine hours. I know. It's, I mean, it's a record for him. And I don't mean, like, just nine hours. That was the show, not The Fringe. The Fringe was... Oh, my gosh. The Fringe was 13. Yeah. So... Finally got those up, so we can we can enjoy finally the Sam Eberts and the universe finally after weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I got to start downloading them here on your high speed. <laughs> My high speed. Actually, you know, I was at the U this morning, and um, I was doing a speed test, and I got two hundred down and ninety nine up. Wow! So, Five minutes later, network crashed. Mm, turns out, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there's just been so many breaking news things today we just decided to do a special yeah you know it's kind of out of band and unusual practice but yeah we thought it was kind of important to bring you the latest in breaking news i mean there's just been so many like amazing almost preposterous yes so it's it's kind of like a revelation it is yes Um, so i hear you wanted to start us off wait wait, no am i the host for a change yeah so so i get a well i always make i'm always make you start right well you should start okay how about if i start you know, this week, Bing is doing something different. What you know, are they doing? Do you know what Bing is doing? Well, they're rebranding their service. They're they're offering the, the what they've always had, and they're offering their new Bing Simple. You know, it looks to me a lot like Google, but I, I think it's probably even better. Yeah, sounds mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I know we've all been talking on the network about how the Pirate Bay has been moving from country to country. They had to leave Norway to go to Sweden, and um, North Korea has offered them a virtual asylum in their country. Yes. But do you know what the Pirate Bay has finally done? I, I hope they found freedom. They did. They found it here in America. In America? It has become the Freedom Bay. The Freedom Bay! Because... Um, yeah, under the new Digital Millennium Copyright Act thing, like it will, the service provider can't be responsible for what users do, so they're they're free to be here. That that's very impressive. I I wonder where they're um, putting their servers. Um, somewhere near the border. <laughs> yes, I would imagine. That's that's really good for them. Do you know uh, Wolfram Alpha? You know how you always hate the green. I hate the green. Well, they've 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 gone a step further. They're they're introducing handwritten. Uh, 
script for uh, your mathematical solutions, so that when you enter in a equation or you know something, the answer comes back to you in a handwritten font. It's known as Comic Sans. I hope you enjoy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So new thing. There's now a Twitter is now a two tier service. Mm-hmm. You can use. T- t- <laughs> It's still Twitter. Tw- Twitter without the vowels. Right. For free. But if you want vowels when you say Twitter, it's $5 a month. Right. Yeah. So so uh the the Twitter is demoing their their new their new system and the, the famous most retweeted tweet ever which is Obama's four more years. It's now reading FR space MR space YRS, you know, four more years. Mhm. Mhm. Man, it's going to be good. You know, I fix it. You know, they they are, they're the ones who do all of the uh, iPad breakdowns and Surface Pro breakdowns. You know, all the breakdowns of products to see how repairable they are. Well, they they've they've revealed today that they finally got the latest and greatest product that we've all been waiting for: the orange. Wow, the orange, not the BlackBerry. It's the orange. Mm. And um, I, I am sad to report, however, that it has a score of zero out of ten, which means it's completely and utterly unrepairable. Oh, no. That's bad. It was, let, me, let me quote some things here. Normal operation requires breaking the outer case. So, I mean, you know, your, your beautiful orange case is going to be shot, so you can't use that anymore. You have to buy a new one. Partition membranes and linings are exceedingly fragile. Um, even just normal casual use breaks them, so I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to reassemble after opening, so once you open it to fix it, you can't go back. That's terrible. Uh, all the components are so, uh, secured together with some type of natural, natural adhesive. Natural? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's that a new thing. Sound, and, sound f- and I think the worst part of this is that it, it's very odd that any manufacturer would ever do this. All of the internal components are made so that they contain acid. That's Even the battery. Weird. <laughs> Even the battery's acid. Wow. I know. They got to work this out. They really do. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you have a whole barrage of Google news. I, oh, you know, I do. You're the Google guy now. You, I'm the Google guy today. Well, huh? I am the host, so you can be the Google guy. So we just gone down a tier. I thought I went up a tier. Oh, that's what I or meant. Or trough. I'm not what? I, I troughed up. I'm, I'm host. Well, there's tiers and troughs and everything else. Peaks and troughs. No, no insane. No, no. We'll, no, we'll, we'll work on this later. So should should I just tell you about it, or do you want to see some of the video? I think it deserves a video. Okay. So this this is um the, the the most groundbreaking product from the Gmail team in literally weeks. Wow. Um it reportedly it took six months to build this, so let's see if we can get that going. Gmail Blue was part of the initial conception for Gmail when it was launched. At the time the technology was simply not there. The culture of Google really is to incorporate moonshot thinking to every project. It's taken us six years to develop the technology to achieve Gmail Blue. Our major challenge was, how do we make this intimate, intuitive, realistic, and organic? In trying to bring email into the 21st century, uh, we are faced with a challenge. How do we completely redesign and recreate something while keeping it exactly the same? The answer is Gmail Blue. You click on Compose, the button Compose, Blue. The word compose itself, blue. Bold face is blue, underline is blue. Italics is blue as well. You write in the body of the email, the font comes up blue. You don't have to make it blue, it is blue. It just is blue. The little lines, they're in blue. When you go into help, it's blue. It's Gmail, only bluer. That's nice. It's insane. Yeah. We experimented with a lot of different colors. We tried orange, brown. Brown was a disaster. We tried uh, yellow. The inspiration of blue came from nature. Ocean, sky, uh, blue whales. A blue that was reminiscent of nature, but better than what nature created. Gmail blue is, uh, it just opens a lot of doors that haven't been opened before. I think the first thought that's going to come to the end user's mind is I can't believe I waited this long for this. Wow, you know, and and so uh, this is clearly competition. Like, I I don't know how long they've been working on this for sure. I don't know how they even knew, but this is clearly a competitor to Windows Blue that's cu- going to be coming out in just a couple months. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Google's ahead so far. They're literally months ahead. I know they 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 t- 
took it all apart, put it all back together, and then added some blue. And it's exactly uh, the same, but bluer. I know. I mean, I, I, I don't know how they did that. I mean, I can, I can, I, you know, I do know. Can you imagine the Nexus blue? I got to buy it. I need to get one. I have to upgrade. Okay. Well, I'll get on that. Maybe later. But you know, I, I do have some sad news. It's some sad news. Yeah, you know, you know this video service that we all love. It's called YouTube. Apparently, uh, today is the last day that it's going to be available for for public use because apparently YouTube was a competition and nobody happened to remember their their competition posters from 2005. And you know, I I was in sixth grade, so how could I remember? Because I could barely read. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, do you want to watch the video for their closing announcement? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of sad, so don't don't get too over enthusiastic. We are so close to the end. Tonight at midnight, YouTube.com will no longer be accepting entries. After eight amazing years, it is finally time to review everything that has been uploaded to our site and begin the process of selecting a winner. We started YouTube in 2005 as a contest with a simple goal to find the best video in the world. We had no idea we'd get such a great response. You've uploaded over 70 hours of footage every minute, and we've been blown away by the variety, imagination, and anything goes spirit that has driven the competition. We are all storytellers. That's what pulled me into this contest. You know, like stories of how to Photoshop and stories about the Hop It Trailer HD. I encourage everybody to watch as many videos as possible before YouTube deletes everything tonight. Every video that has been uploaded to our site will be reviewed by our staff of 30,000 technicians. They'll narrow down the submissions, and then our Steam panel will select the best video, which will be announced when the website goes back online in 2023, featuring the winner of YouTube and nothing else. Our team of judges is made up of distinguished film critics, YouTube celebrities, and some of our most prolific commenters. Yes, it's a product unboxing. But I think it adds to the product unboxing genre, and it subverts our expectations as an audience. I don't suck, you suck, and so is this video. Look, I'm pretty sure that the first 10 minutes of Citizen Kang is great, but what I love about Epic Skateboard Fail is that it's short, it's funny, and it's straight to the point. But is it the best video on YouTube? We're going to have the same conversation about all 150,000 videos that we watch. It's an amazing process. We always said that this shouldn't be a popularity contest. Gangnam Style has the same chance of winning as a video with 40 views of a man feeding bread to a duck. Of course I'm hoping to win, but even if I've inspired just one person to go out and harass people on the beach, that's something I still feel pretty good about. I'd better win. Otherwise, all those years traveling the world were just an expensive waste of time. So my strategy from day one has always been post as many videos as possible. I mean, it's all about shots on goal. It's important that you keep pushing yourself. We challenge ourselves every day to think of groups of people who could react to some video that people already know about. Hopefully the judges appreciate the risks that we take as artists. When we heard about the contest, we spent months trying to come up with the best idea. Then Charlie bit my finger and I was like, write that down. I did dancing. My dad put a lot of money into this dental surgery I didn't even need just so we could win this contest. He'll be really, really upset if we lose. It's not just about the recognition of being the world's best video. As promised, when YouTube started back in 2005, the winner will also walk away with an MP3 player that clips to your sleeve and a $500 stipend for your next creative endeavor. So remember, get all of your last-minute submissions in by tonight at midnight. While your work's finished, ours is just beginning. It's going to be an exciting decade. Wow, those judges are so lucky. That just sounds like a fun job. Yeah, and you know, uh, I uh, at the end they they say what the prize is, right? It's it's an MP3 player mm-hmm. and five hundred dollars for a stipend. And I, I do have some more information about the MP3 player. So in two thousand five, the premier MP3 player, of course, was a um, two gigabyte iPod. Uh, unfortunately, that model has been discontinued since then. So they probably bought one. And uh, put well, it on a show. well, unfortunately, they they lost it, and uh, oh. they're substituting, unfortunately, a um, iPod Touch. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you you can't you you lost it on your vintage, but uh, at least at, you win some. At least you can watch your YouTube video on it, though. Yeah, that, and that wins. You have the title being the best in the world, right? So but, the YouTube app that'll be on your iPod Touch, it'll only go to your video. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, wait, I thought I heard that Apple's going to take that app down. Oh, yeah, they did that. Yeah. No, so man. they're just screwed. Oh, oh, Terrible. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, uh, so the, Google did some other things that weren't quite as interesting, but they, they, they're introducing a treasure hunt service that will be on Google Maps. Did you know, did you know that you can uh, find treasure from some pirate on Google Maps? Well, apparently you can now. Well, cool. They, they, they've put X's on the map and some kind of strange scroll thing. Cool. I'll have to look for a treasure later. Uh, adventure. I love adventure. I know you do. And, of course, Google knows. And it has literally nothing to do with their knowledge graph. No, it, it, it's literally your nose. You know, the thing you type with. Yeah, I was reading about this because um, they're fearing so much competition from Bing. So they just had to step up their competition and add nose. To, to add another sense. Mm-hmm. And so nose allows them to search through 15 million smells. It's amazing. Um, so if you have a Nexus 7 or a Nexus 4 or a Nexus 10, you can use this today. And it will be rolling out and coming lots to other devices. That sounds amazing. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hear you have a lot of floss news. I do have some floss news for you. Well, I don't know if the audience is familiar with floss news. Floss is something that's only going to happen today because it's the fake, word right? itself is it's fake. Because it's insanely stupid. Yeah, because that, that's today's April Fool's joke for us. I don't even, we use the word I, I don't even know what floss means. Floss. I did floss and I got dental floss. Yeah. See, it's fake. It is fake. I mean, the, some people pretend it's a word that's meaning something with open source, but it's not. It's just a piece of crap. It could definitely not mean free Libre open source software. It can't. It really can't. <laughs> it can, I, don't, I hope it cannot. Um, well, either way. Anyway. So, ever heard of Ubuntu 13.04? I next, do. The next Ubuntu release? I have heard of that. Well, per Shuttleworth request, it's going to come disabled, like the online search. Like when, you hold, when you press Windows key to search for stuff, mm-hmm. it searches online. But, yeah. Um, well, that's called a super key on Ubuntu, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I see a Windows on my key. Right. Turns out. Um, but it's going to be disabled on default because the, he respects your privacy. And because a new version is just going to, everything is just going to go through Canonical. So they're going to know everything you've ever searched for. Mm-hmm. And he wants people to voluntarily hit yes to that. Right. Because people want to hit yes, please follow everything I do. I mean, they just don't want them just automatically. Well, follow. they're, you know, they've, they've reacted to the feedback over the past couple of months. Yeah. And. You know the outlash and the anger and the hostility, and they're they're finally making some amends into the interior services that they want to focus on. Yeah, I mean he's just a hero, oh, isn't he? I mean yeah. he made Ubuntu in the first place, so I mean, yeah, this he was is, the actual founder. I mean, yeah. right? So I mean, this is the next logical step in that lineage of amazing things. Yes, but his victory is short lived because Ubuntu is now a thing of the past. Is, is it? Bebian. I mean, how many times have you said that on the show? Bebian is the new most popular Linux distribution ever. And it has completely changed the way Linux users are represented. Because when, when you hear of Linux users, you just think of fat I, guys uh, that are like <laughs> pseudo-programmers sitting in a corner. You know what I was going to say, right? What? I was going to say you. Ah, crap! <laughs> <laughs> but no. But you always think of fat males, and they're of bearded origins, and are kind of out there in the social scheme. But now, popular 12 to 20-year-old girls are the largest demographic of Linux users in the world. Bebian is groundbreaking, it has super secure systems, and it comes preloaded with Justin Bieber on the background. I mean, what more could you want? And you can just look at him. And he's got the AUG file of his hit single, Baby, um, one of his uh, most famous songs. And you're, you can listen to it, and it's pure augness. And it, it's just it's just an amazing feat. So so um and of course this publication um asked they you know they they called Justin up and asked him what his thoughts on his new you know distro was all about. He at, they you know they asked mm-hmm. him what he thought, and so he says, you know I think I've heard about it somewhere. You know uh, Linux. Oh yeah right. It's the water squirting toy kids are raging about these days. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can go play with your new water squirting toy. Yeah. Yeah. Also. Another breaking thing. Richard Stallman, the founder of the Free Software Foundation, has decided that because to combat all these hot girls running around with Bebian, like, he needs to have his programmers, like his GNU staff, everybody... Stepping it up. Stepping it up. Mm-hmm. So you know how to combat this? Well, obviously you need to appeal to girls, so you need to look good. So you need your own fashion line. Right. Um, 
So, um, instead of having all these child laborers making clothes for other companies, these child laborers are going to make clothes for him. He started his own fashion lines out. Um, they're amazing. And he, he wants everybody to start combing their beard and dressing nice with his clothes. And so a portion of the proceeds, uh, pro, um, proceeds are going to the Free Software Foundation so he can write more code while looking fabulous. I, you know, this, this is a great move on his part because mm-hmm. I, I know as a programmer... Um, my neck beard always gets in the way of my collar, so hopefully they take that into account in his fashion line. They will. I mean, because that's a that's It's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, is, yep. this would be great. It is. Mm-hmm. So, ever heard of uh, Systemed? Yeah, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know a lot of stuff. Well, basically, when you get most Linuxes, it, it comes pre-installed, or it, it only when you use Fedora. Like it, I would never do that. Like it, it's, it removes the initial... Um, System manager, basically, okay. and does this thing. So basically, a bunch of people spent a long time remaking something identical to this. But now, they have decided that they want to make a new basic email system. And to do this, they have to destroy... They, they're dumping using the GNU C libraries. Hey, you know, I don't blame them. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it, goes with, it fits their business model perfectly. They have perfectly functioning code, and so they're going to redesign it, and it's going to become useless and broken. And that that's, everything sounds, sounds about right, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it just it's exactly fitting in with their normal business model. You know, in this day and age, who 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 would work on a dedicated mail client? Yeah, they, their their I whole mean, business was shot from the in, from the start. Yeah. I mean, honestly. And now the most breaking floss news ever from itsfloss.com. dot com. Linus Torville, the creator of Linux, has decided and has accepted the offer from Microsoft to head development. For Windows 9. Um, this is after they fired Sonoski. And, uh, no, no, he left. So he, they didn't actually yeah, fire him sure. the day after Windows 8 came out. Um, so, I mean, with Torvald, there's going to be some massive um, improvements. But it seems some Linux fans are kind of angry. But um, everybody's happy because this new Linux and Microsoft um, bundle is going to be much better than Apple. And they are going to take over Apple. Apple's going to be a thing of the past soon. You know that's that's okay. I'm I'm all for it. it it's about time. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's. Uh, we we know yeah. what happened to Apple. Apple reached acclaimed success as soon as they brought on a Unix derivative. So yeah, you know um, this is gonna work. But there's one company who's who doesn't like this because I guess Nvidia likes Microsoft how it was, and Torville has announced that Nvidia is just not gonna work with the new Windows Nine. That's like uh, yeah. It, that's it, okay. Yeah, he's he's very angry at uh, Nvidia. Stuff. How angry? Uh, so angry. <laughs> very good. You figured it out, man. As a host, you're getting good at this. Yeah, I am the host today, man. Um, it's about time. Yeah. Hey, want to talk about a really awesome end peripheral device? End peripheral device. No, no, do you, Let's talk about three D printers. Does, does that have something to do with a three D printer? It has something to do with three D. Uh, you know, so. your three D printer should print out a DVD that can fit your new copy of Vibian. Uh, it, Vibian is out, and I'm going to get uh, Vibian One. It, it just came out of beta, and it, but it, but it's two point six point four gigabytes. Yeah, do you hear that? Um, mm-hmm. That's a lot of gigabytes. Yeah, yeah. Um. But so 3D printers are in the news, they're all the rage, and now these scientists have made a 3D printer that can make a smaller 3D printer. Wow. I mean, I mean just look at the images of it. I mean, it just it looks so next world. Like it's, Next world? It's better than next gen. Next gen is just next year's technology. No, no, I mean, no, this, no, just, just no, 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 this world. is next universe. Wow. Do you really think this is, I don't even think it's next universe. No, 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 no. If a printer can make a printer, then surely it can make a universe episode. You know... I mean, a miniature Sam Ebert, just storm on the shelf, and he can actually get shows done. Well, I think I would have to buy this product. I think so. Do, do I we, think you have to feed him tangerines, though. That's okay. I know how to dissect. Some I, I know how to dissect an orange now. Yeah, because of the eye fix it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just think it's great. I I totally agree. Yeah. So Slash Dot is a um, nice news corporation. Are and they really? They, uh, you know my feelings towards Slash Dot. Yeah. Um, so they're Slashdot.com, and uh, it's a great place. And they are now comparing um, computers to find which computer will be the best new home computing device. And so they pick, they pick the two most popular computers on the market right now. Radio Shack's TRS-80 and the Commodore 64. Um, so these, these two computers, they're, they're testing it out, and 
it's just it's amazing like the commodore is projected to win because it's got the the amazing 8-bit um uh, transistors and everything else all these other cool things and we i just can't wait to see these results yeah, I don't know if this is going to take off. This seems pretty uh, pretty tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you know about uh, airplanes? You know, I don't know too much about airplanes because I never go flying. Mm. Oh, but I got a good one. So my grandmother, was, you know, it was Easter yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. She just suddenly decided that she wanted to go to Hawaii. Really? Yeah. Just oh. like, hey, guys, I want to go to Hawaii this summer. Bye. <laughs> Did she leave? No. No. Oh. This summer. Um... But and she said bye. Well, she was leaving on country buffet, mm. right? Um, and so, so then I, I I look up, of course, on my phone immediately, right there in front of her before she goes. Um, do you know how much a plane ticket to Hawaii is? Yeah. What is it? Oh, uh, you know, round trip, one plane ticket, about twelve hundred dollars. Mm. Yeah, I can go to CES four times for that price. We could drive there for less now. Yes, that is true. Huh? Yeah. Um, what do you know about planes? I know. That Virgin Airlines has just found the next new plane design that will make all the consumers love them. So, imagine a plane, just like any other plane, Mm -hmm. but the floor is made out of glass. And so you're flying along, and then in the middle aisle, it's just glass. And so you're walking on it, and you can look down, and you can see the world from down. So, do you know if you have to pay a premium for these seats? Uh, that's, that's... It's likely, I it's assume. It's likely, yes. Um, see, I know they do this with all, a lot of cruises. Like, you can get certain rooms with a certain portion of it having an open floor, like, you know, a clear floor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's obviously sealed and pressurized and all sorts of stuff. You know, it's mostly safe. Um, mm-hmm. But you do have to pay a crap load more for those seats yeah. on boats. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's not even in the sky. That's in the ocean, so... And, you know, this is, this is a step up. I know. Yeah. Um... Also, tomorrow is going to be uh, National Take Your Work Computer to Work Day. Really? So you know how there's been these, all these studies we've been reading about how workers are more productive when they are allowed to use their cell phones in the building mm-hmm. and stuff? Like, when people can casually browse the internet, um, they work faster on their phones. But imagine if you brought your desktop to work with you. Wouldn't that just be the best? No. So everybody's supposed to bring their desktop to work with them. I don't know if that would be the best. Yeah. Either way, we now get to announce... A new contest. Really? Right. Yes. CERN has announced a new content contest where you just fill out your name, submit it to them, and they're going to draw names. Ten lucky winners are going to get a bottled Higgs boson particle to keep forever. Wait. You'll just be able to have it in a bottle in your room. Can you do, you... do you get a certificate to make sure it's authentic? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's amazing. Um, do you know how much that's worth that'll be on eBay? Quite a bit. Um, but I, I, It's got to be worth, like, I don't know, 10 to the 8? Yeah, I know. And if it's 10 to the 8 plus 10 to the 5th. Right, which means it's like 10 to the 12th, right? No, 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 no. When you add um, exponents like that, it's like actually 10 to the 55th. Oh, because so Because you can make so, up your own so, math when you have a Higgs boson. So, if you have a Higgs boson particle, make up your own math. It's fine. You know, addition, what's that? Okay. Yeah. yeah no, you, I mean, you can confirm it to Sigma 5 accuracy that I'm right. Yes, you're you're right. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's all the news I got. Do you have anything? Uh, you know, I'm looking for a little bit more, but uh, here, I can tell you something about Samsung. Samsung is introducing this, this braking technology this week because... Apparently they they you know you know Samsung is you know in China and in, in you know in Asia essentially and there's a lot of smog there because they have uh, you know huge industrial complexes mm-hmm. you know to make all of those phones you know and, and they wanted a new way to clean up the air so they're introducing the new Samsung smart smart eco tree mm. now, this this tree is uh, better than ever it it, it I, I not I don't have specs on it yet because they aren't being released yet but allegedly they can process more air particles than any living tree yet wow mm-hmm. that, that's and amazing and you can watch netflix on it <gasps> it supports netflix yeah it's a smart tree wow it's all the rage i can imagine that yeah. just sounds amazing now speaking of smart smart things uh virgin mobile you know the, my old carrier mm-hmm. uh well they're they're announcing also that they're coming out with a uh, smart pager wow so, I have to upgrade. So, well, I, I don't know if you really want to upgrade because you don't have a pager. But uh, my mom, for example, has a pager, and I, you know, she she loves taking pictures of the cat and the dog and all sorts of stuff. 
Um, well, there's new smart pagers are coming out with. They didn't announce a price, but they did announce the specs. It will cost some around something around two fifty, I think. But that's you know small too bad. small price to pay for an amazing pager. Now here's why it's amazing: thirteen megapixel camera, oh. sixty four gigs of onboard storage, and micro SD slot, and four G reception. Wow! I mean, this pager is better than my phone. Yeah, and it's cheaper. So, when you want to send a picture to somebody, how many pages does it take if it's 13 megapixels? You know, they didn't say how they're going to deal with that, but I assume it's all over. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not like pages anymore. It's more of a continuous stream with the radio. So, it's not going to have to send 600 pages? No, no. Oh, okay. No, it won't. But also, um, it, it has a two-inch screen, but it's black and white. Well, I like e display stuff. Is it, is it a nice display? It, it's 441 PPI. That's, that's very dense. That's, that's so dense. <laughs> so dense. <laughs> yes. So it, it, that's really good. I have to get this. I I would say so. Yes, I would recommend getting that. And you know, there's there's been a lot of news, but uh, I think that was the brunt of it. Yeah, and of course we're going to do our show on Friday. Yes, still. yes, of course. Um, um, but we just we just had to tell you about these news breaking things, right? Uh, you know, and that's that's part of being a journalist. I know, and uh, it's. I like being host for change. It, it's uh, nice. You know, if you think you like it, I like it a lot more. Well, I, I like this feature. And, feature, huh? But I'm very sad I have to... Um, Yield I, already? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Because the network... Will crumble otherwise. Will be gone tomorrow. Because I quit. You quit again? Or I'm taking a day off and we'll have a show on Friday. Hey, but don't you quit like at 6.30 every day? And quit and become a co-host and let you do all the real work? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm just chief studio technician. Chef t- studio technician. You made ed- just egg because sandwiches. because I smelled like a what? chef. Smelled or spelled? Spelled. Smelled. <laughs> something <laughs> along the words of sensory input. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, well, anyway, where can we find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me at um, ilovejohnsaracusa.com. It's a fan site I made for my beloved. Well, of course. Um, and, and, of course, you can like the page and plus one and, and retweet it, which is the most important part, right? Mm-hmm. And, of course, where's your Twitter? You could find me. My Twitter is um, Syracuda, SyracusaMan.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dot com, huh? Yeah. Wow, that's a I long... Mean, I also have another one. That's a long Twitter um, handle. Yeah. Um, HotDogMans.com. Oh, HotDogMans? Mm. <laughs> and, and, of course, you know... Uh, uh, I did, while we were doing the show here, I, I saw Syracuse tweeting, and um, he wants to know wh- what materials he needs to get his son started with D and D four. So really? I think he might want to give your beloved a call because I, I know I would he, mail him my book because I don't like D and D four. I, I, I okay then. Mm-hmm. I, I think he wants to know. Uh, and of course, you can find me and Ryan Rapper said just whatever, but especially on the Twitter Ryan Amar and uh, elsewhere. And and you know where you should find this show and more shows. Of this amazing quality, do you, do you know? Well, if they're listening to this show, they probably found the way to the website. So if they want to find more, just click on that NCR flag. Just click on the dual right. headed bear, and that will bring you back to the homepage where you can select another show by and Sam Ebert. By Sam Ebert, because yeah. Sam Ebert will, going forward, essentially be on every single show we do. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what he's done with his life, but apparently he's, going to, he's dedicated himself to being on every show. Yeah, and I heard he also has a great... Um, co-host for his new show oh who is it he's got nicholas cage coming up oh and he's oh. so sexy <laughs> indeed he is yeah i'm just uh, looking at a picture of him right now you know if you thought our our uh you know previous real guest our previous previous famous guest made this network real man um, nicholas cage, nicholas cage is going to do it for real this time yeah yeah that's I mean, all i have mm-hmm. yeah well uh have a great one have a good one <laughs>